The human brain is a big, intricate, yet delicate structure of human body. It is amazing when it works properly. I'm not a doctor or brain scientist. I came to this lab to visit my favorite doctor, Dr. Jonathan Cooper, and I am at his Pediatric Storage Disorders Laboratory in London. Let me rewind. It all started with a welcome addition to my family. Sarah was born in 1997. She was perfect in every way. Her brain started to develop as any other healthy child's brain. She was my little prodigy. She loved her books, played games. And she seemed to be often happy, especially if she managed to do some mischief. And then the year 2000 rolled around. While everyone worried about the end of the world, Sarah managed to sleep through the celebration. But the new year brought about a most unexpected turn. Seizures. And the end of the world as we knew it. It took two years and many doctors scratching their heads to find out what was wrong with Sarah. Turns out, she was indeed very special. Sarah had late infantile neuronal ceroid lipofuscinosis. That is quite a mouthful. It is a very rare disease. One type of neuronal ceroid lipofuscinosis, commonly known as Batten disease. A mutation on a particular gene caused all her problems. One wrong letter in six billion letters in our DNA the gene is called CLN2 and is located on chromosome 11. It turns out Sarah's dad and I have the same mutation in one copy of the gene, while the other copy is fine. That is sufficient to keep us oblivious to a ticking bomb inside us. Sarah wasn't that lucky. She received a malfunctioning copy from each of us. As if someone tossed two coins and decreed, anything but tail and tail is healthy, ordinary life. But two tails is slow deterioration and death before age 10. We frantically searched for what is known about this disease and hoped for a cure. While identification of specific genes that caused the disease led to the development of DNA diagnostics, we realized the cure is a long way away. At the time when the CLN2 gene was identified, Sarah was a happy six-month-old. The first symptoms start between ages two and four. The typical early signs are a loss of muscle coordination, ataxia, and seizures, along with progressive mental deterioration. Sarah had her first seizure few months before her third birthday, and she passed away in 2006, just a few days shy of her ninth birthday. Her brain was only one-third weight of a healthy child.
we know since we donated her brain for research into this terrible disease. Children with the late infantile form of the disease lack a key lysosomal enzyme, tripeptylpeptidase 1. Lysosome acts as a garbage collector in a cell, or rather as a recycling bin. By degrading proteins, the lysosome cleans the waste from the brain. Without this enzyme, the cells get clogged up and die. Genetic discoveries have enabled greater progress in the quest to find a cure. However, this disease affects only one out of 200,000 children. This provides little incentive for drug companies to invest in research. There is more money in treating baldness and erectile dysfunction. Fortunately, there are some research laboratories focusing on research that will hopefully lead to a cure for this disease. Pediatric Storage Disorders Lab in London King's College is one of such laboratories. The inspiration for the lab came from the parents of Natalie, a child affected by the disease. Her picture is still displayed right by Dr. Cooper's monitor. The girl has been joined by my Sarah and many more children who continue to serve as a daily inspiration. The lab hosts open days for parents and anyone related to come visit. I could not stop thinking that maybe one of these students did tests on Sarah's brain tissue. I appreciate what these students do for us parents. It is very hard for me to meet new families, new children that are given the same diagnosis as Sarah. To this day, there is no cure. Sarah passed away in 2006, but that year also marks another milestone. That year, for the first time, children were able to enroll into a clinical trial. And with that came a renewed hope. While Sarah's sentence was irreversible, the children today have a better chance of something changing during their own lifetime. The fundamental research into how the missing enzyme works paves the way for enzyme replacement therapy gene therapies, and stem cell therapy. These therapies try to permanently supply the missing enzyme to the millions of cells in the human body. Even though these new breakthroughs will not help Sarah, I find great encouragement and hope in witnessing the progress that researchers are doing every day. Thank you.